What's up, folks? I'm Chris, your NFL writer here at Occupy Fantasy, here with a look at the 10-game Week 9 slate of the NFL season on DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo. And we'll jump right into it. My favorite play, really not just my favorite play, it's everyone's favorite play this week, is Jacksonville Jaguars running back Travis Etienne. The Jaguars shipped undrafted free agent James Robinson over to the Jets, and last week, ETN had 24 carries for an astronomical 156 yards and a rushing touchdown, but most importantly, he had 75% of the team's rushes without Robinson in the picture. This week, ETN is a slight underdog against the Raiders, but it should remain a neutral script according to odds makers, with the Raiders only being favored by a point and a half or two points, depending on where you look. ETN, good for 75% of the team rushes against a slightly below average league rush defense. Those targets, we really want to see them improve because the Raiders are the second worst team in the NFL defending running backs in the passing game. Load up on Travis ETN here on DraftKings, especially because at $6,300 as a true three down back, uh, this price is just way too cheap. Over on FanDuel, everyone's favorite play is a little different, and it's actually... Indianapolis Colts running back Deion Jackson. So Deion Jackson is just $5,000 here on FanDuel, and that is way too cheap for a starting running back. The last time that we saw Jackson handle the majority of the work, it was week five when Naheem Hines, who has now been traded to the Bills, uh, played but got hurt very early in the game. Jackson took over most of the work in that game ahead of practice squatter Philip Lindsay, and then the following week, Jackson just straight up started for the Colts we go over back to DraftKings just to look at Deion Jackson's game logs, uh, obviously 12, 13 carries in each of those games where he played a ton of snaps, but 14 targets in two games, 10 of them in the game that they planned to start him in, hasn't dropped a pass his way yet. So Deion Jackson is going to get a ton of opportunities that are valuable in PPR. And we like him here at DraftKings at $5,200 as well as a salary saver at the running back position. Colts are underdogs by about five and a half points on the road against the New England Patriots, but it's hard to sneeze at the workload that we're going to get for Jackson at now just $5,200 here on DraftKings, and especially, once again, 5000 over here on FanDuel. You're going to want to play Jackson in the majority of your lineups, if not all of them, especially if the field is all over him this week. As you know by now, if you've been watching our videos, we like to look at the betting markets and see what the odds makers think are going to be the most favorable spots for running backs this week. Typically, that means running backs that are going to be playing in positive game scripts. A positive game script would be a team that is favored to win by a decent amount of points. Running back had a lot of opportunities late in the game in those potential outcomes, right? So the Buffalo Bills are the biggest favorite on the week, and that means Devin Singletary is probably a running back that you can consider in high-risk contests. The field is not really playing Singletary this week. If we go over to the Occupy model and look at the running back position, we actually only have Singletary projected to be about 7% owned on DraftKings, 11% owned over on FanDuel. So maybe a very uh, interesting pivot away from Josh Allen and the passing game. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing and high risk, Singletary does have a really good game script here. Biggest risk with the Bills is that when they go up big, which this betting market expects them to do against the New York Jets this week, they may actually go to someone like James Cook instead in the running game. So just be aware that that is the risk with going with Devin Singletary this week. The Cincinnati Bengals, they're favored by seven and a half points. And Joe Mixon, who has one of the strongest, if not the strongest, opportunity roles at the position this year in terms of carries and targets per game, he's inexplicably $6,500 here on DraftKings as over a touchdown favorite against the Carolina Panthers. He's just outside of the most popular plays on the board this week. We've got him at 19% projected ownership in DraftKings tournaments, a little lower on FanDuel at 14%. Inside the top five in terms of projected ownership and the number one running back play in our model in this matchup if we ignore ownership. So Joe Mixon, definitely someone that is worth considering, considering the context of the matchup, his ranking, and how the field is playing him this week. Ramondre Stevenson, starting running back for the New England Patriots. They're favored by five and a half to six points, depending on where you look. Stevenson has straight up taken the starting running back job from Damian Harris. And not only that, 
Harris did not practice at all this week for the Patriots. He's got an illness that he's managing, and he's questionable for this game against the Colts. So if Harris is out of the lineup, that is even better for Stevenson's workload here. One way that Stevenson fails is the Colts' rushing defense is actually one of the better rush defenses in the league, so that is something that he will have to contend with. But the workload is going to be extremely safe. He's got 62% of team carries the last three weeks of play for the Patriots, and... 20, almost 22% of team targets from Patriots quarterbacks, whether that's Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi. So not only is he the featured running back, he's somewhat the featured receiver in this Patriots offense right now. And that is not something we're going to argue with at $6,200 on DraftKings. He's one of my favorite plays on the board this week, and I would recommend playing him in low risk lineups. So I would slot him in here on DraftKings. Over on FanDuel, we actually have an interesting decision with some of these running backs. I still like playing Travis Etienne Jr. here at $7,600, but we have Joe Mixon, $8,100, Ramondre Stevenson, $8,000, Travis Etienne, who I just talked about, $7,600. A lot of these guys are priced very closely together, and unlike on DraftKings, where we have Etienne at $6,300 and Stevenson at $6,200 and Mixon at $6,500, Basically, what I'm saying is all these value backs here on DraftKings make it hard to justify getting up to Aaron Jones at almost at $1,000 more. But over on FanDuel here, Aaron Jones is priced in between all of these guys in the best matchup, I would say, against the woeful Detroit Lions defense all around. Bad rush defense, bad pass defense. Aaron Jones, the lead back for the Packers, one of the leading receivers for the Packers, given the struggles they've been having at that position. I think it makes sense to consider playing him a little more over on FanDuel. And we actually see that reflected in how the field is playing it. So I'm right now sorted by the top ownership plays here on DraftKings at the running back position. Aaron Jones comes in in the top eight over on DraftKings. But over on FanDuel, he's a top two play, which means he's going to be extremely popular, not just in tournaments, but in low risk because of how closely he's priced to some of these other running backs at the position here in week nine. So a little bit of a different approach to the running back position depending on where you're playing this week. Aaron Jones, a much better play purely because of the pricing tier here over on FanDuel. Now speaking of Aaron Jones and the Packers, they are playing in the highest total game of the week. The Packers are visiting the Lions here in week nine and that game has a 50 point total in betting markets. Normally that would be something that I would be targeting in high risk contests with game stacks where we're playing a quarterback, two of his pass catcher teammates and a run back from the other side but I don't necessarily have a ton of interest in this game this week because of a lack of clarity at the receiver positions on each team. So I'm going to Ross St. Brown, obviously a good play to pair with Jared Goff, but what else do we do in Detroit Lions stacks with Jared Goff? We have no more TJ Hawkinson because he was shipped off to the Vikings via trade. So maybe a punt at the tight end position, but it feels pretty thin. Uh, at wide receiver behind Amon Ross St. Brown, maybe Khalif Raymond, who's just $4,000 here on DraftKings. But I just don't feel very good about the access to an actual ceiling in this offense from these guys. So that's one reason why I'm off the Lions. And then over on the Packers side, obviously we have running backs. And we have Romeo Dobbs, who is actually underperforming his opportunity in recent weeks. But beyond Dobbs, the little uncertain who is going to be the other receiver that we can use for Green Bay. I may change my tune on this if Alan Lazard here is able to play. So keep an eye on the daily plug, which is available over at Occupy Fantasy. That was published Friday evening. If Lazard ends up being confirmed in questionable right now as of the Friday injury report, it might be a little easier to stack the Packers here because I do like using two pass catchers with the quarterbacks. We have the Chargers facing the Atlanta Falcons this week in a 49 and a half point total game. And that is one of my favorite ones to stack this week, particularly because of the value. The value in this game with the Chargers because of injury is super important to understand and how it's going to shape this slate. Obviously, a lot of people are going to just lean directly on Austin Eckler, who has a massive role in the passing game, 28 targets over the last two weeks of play for the Chargers. And those are in games that were, were without at least one of Keenan Allen or Mike Williams suffering from injuries now here in week nine off the bye. They're going to be without both of them. Eckler definitely viable to use in stacks with Justin Herbert. But we also have extreme value at the wide receiver and tight end positions. Gerald Everett is actually the number one tight end in the Occupy model this week. Projects to be just 6% owned on DraftKings. 
but a little more popular over on FanDuel and Yahoo for those of you who play over there. And we have him projected for over eight targets because of the lack of other players on this roster to really soak up that volume from Justin Herbert. So just $4,800, Everett makes sense as a pass catcher pairing with Justin Herbert. At the wide receiver position, without Mike Williams and Keenan Allen to run routes from their normal positions, we expect the Chargers to deploy a three wide receiver set of Michael Bandy and Josh Palmer on the outside and DeAndre Carter as the inside slot receiver on most three wide receiver set plays. Except DeAndre Carter is also questionable with an illness, which would definitely mix things up even further. Joshua Palmer was on the injury report this week with a concussion, but he has been cleared, so we can expect him to get in there. And then Michael Bandy, who is a deep threat wide receiver. For those who played preseason DFS, we were super into Michael Bandy and his teammate Joe Reed. Got a ton of opportunities uh, in this offense in the preseason. Bandy seems to be ahead in the pecking order. Played a little bit the last couple of weeks. Should play a ton now, given the opportunities that are now available for routes to be run in this offense. And at just $3,500, Bandy isn't just one of the best cheap pieces to stack with Justin Herbert. He's one of the best all-around cheap plays on this slate here on DraftKings at 3500 and over on FanDuel where he's $4,600 at wide receiver. Just to be clear, there's a lot of ways that the fourth or fifth passing option in Justin Herbert's passing game can fail for us. But at this price tag, we're hoping that if he sees four or five targets and he hauls a couple of those in, hopefully he can get us 10 to 15 fantasy points, if not more, if one of those turns into a big play for a touchdown. And that should be enough to open up the rest of our lineups for us because really, this is skeleton key pricing. Putting Michael Bandy in your lineup allows you to get access to a lot of more expensive things that are available on the board. So I do think this is very viable in high-risk contests on DraftKings this week is to get exposure to the Chargers passing game against the Atlanta Falcons in one of the higher total games on the slate. The Chargers carrying the third highest implied team total on the slate as well. On the Atlanta side, don't have as much interest in fully stacking the Atlanta side. So I do think it's just a matter of stacking the Chargers and either not bringing back an Atlanta Falcon or using someone like Kyle Pitts at tight end if you're not playing Gerald Everett. He's actually a little cheaper than Gerald Everett. Or I think the best other option is Drake London in the passing game. My favorite game stack on the board is one of just two that we have available to us in the late window on Sunday. It's the Cardinals and the Seahawks. And it's the Kyler Murray side that I'm most interested in. And for weeks now, the top-ranked quarterbacks in our model at OccupyFantasy.com have been the best plays on the slate to consider. So not only should we play Justin Herbert in high-risk contest, but we've got Kyler Murray available to us. And that is a quarterback that is a lot easier to stack than it might seem given his price tag because we've got access to two pretty clear teammates that we can pair with him. DeAndre Hopkins is the target monster in the passing game at wide receiver, and Zach Ertz at the tight end position are the two best players to pair with Kyler Murray pretty much every single week. We could consider Rondell Moore as well. The target volume is certainly there, and obviously he had a great game last week against the Vikings. Pricing is pretty favorable if you want to consider him. Really a coin flip, I would say, between Moore and Ertz, depending on what you're doing with your lineup with double stacks with Kyler Murray this week. But I'm going with the Ertz direction here for the purposes of this build. On the Seattle side, one of the best ways to bring this back if you don't want to deal with guessing which wide receiver is going to be supported by Geno Smith the most is to play Kenneth Walker III at the running back position. So Walker III, best bring back here in an Arizona stack. You've got an Arizona 3-1, two of our popular running backs. And now we can look at filling out the rest of our lineup with underperforming wide receivers, highly ranked plays in the model, etc., etc., and you see I only have 39.66 per player remaining if I go this direction, which is why someone like Michael Bandy is so important this week. Someone like Michael Bandy, not necessarily always Michael Bandy, just so we're clear on that. But now we've got $4,200 per player remaining. If I get a cheap defense in here, that's even more allowing me to play an actual good wide receiver at my final wide receiver spot. Pretty viable way to attack this slate, I would say, in high-risk contests over on DraftKings. There aren't really any other games on both sides that I like to stack this week, so I think we're going to focus on playing sides. That means double stacking in offense and not necessarily bringing back a teammate in those stacks. The Buffalo Bills with Josh Allen are going to be the most popular team people are interested in considering for these types of builds on this slate. Josh Allen projects for the highest ownership across the board wherever you are playing DFS contests this week. So he's also probably going to be your low-risk quarterback if you play low-risk contests. 
trying to get a double stack with Josh Allen is a lot harder on DraftKings than it is on FanDuel, but it's not impossible. We definitely want to consider Stefan Diggs because that's what the field is going to do at the wide receiver position. Josh Allen, our most popular quarterback play. Stefan Diggs is one of our three most popular wide receiver plays, depending on where you're playing. Um, go over to Occupy Model, and Diggs actually going to be the most popular play alongside DeAndre Hopkins on DraftKings. And on FanDuel, he's in the, he's second, tied for a second most popular play with Hopkins as well. Uh, so definitely going to be low risk, low risk viable, high risk viable, almost certainly someone you have to pair with Josh Allen. Now, trying to double stack Allen with his two favorite weapons, Stefan Diggs and Gabriel Davis, is difficult. The pricing is pretty tight, but I do think we have a narrow path to get there. It's definitely punting at the defense position. And it's also not required to use a bring back in your stacks when teams like the Bills are favored by more than 10 points. Bills are favored by 11 points here. But it's hard to argue with the workload for a really cheap New York Jets player. And the best one to, to use in these types of lineups, I think, is the tight end Tyler Conklin. Look at Conklin's workload here. Obviously, the targets ballooned a little bit last week against New England, and he's coming off of a two-touchdown game, so maybe this does feel a little bit like a chase. But Conklin has just under a 25% target share in this offense from Zach Wilson, and Conklin has been highly touted as one of Zach Wilson's favorite targets since the preseason. So Zach, uh, so Tyler Conklin at $3,200 against the Bills does make sense, not just as a bring back here, but also as a cheap tight end that you can use to make this type of lineup fit. You have $5,700 per player remaining to finish off a lineup here. There are plenty of players in this salary range that let you do that. Uh, so I do think it's possible to double stack Josh Allen. A little more flexible if you come off Gabriel Davis and do something with uh, Dawson Knox at tight end, who's a little bit more expensive than Tyler Conklin. Uh, that probably allows you to play uh, a better wide receiver and a uh, another running back or something like that to finish off your Buffalo Bills stack here. So it, it's very important to think about how you're playing Buffalo Bills lineups in high-risk contests because in low-risk contests, Allen and Diggs, you're basically play, playing a cash lineup at this point because this is what feel, the field is going to do in low-risk contests. They're going to play Allen at quarterback. They're going to play Diggs at wide receiver most likely – and they're going to fill in the rest of these final three spots with some high touch opportunity players at each of the positions. So somebody like Stevenson on New England, who I had in here before we started talking about stacks. Uh, somebody at the tight end position that is cheap, that has a lot of opportunities coming their way. Looking at our model, that's probably Bob Tanyan with the Green Bay Packers, projects to be the most popular tight end on the slate. And that will leave us with a healthy amount of salary to finish off the wide receiver position if we do that, right? $5,800. There is a wide receiver that does get us there and finish off this low-risk lineup. Uh, that certainly could be viable in low-risk contests if that's the lineup that you want to play that is seeing all of the opportunities in his offense because they traded everyone away. So I do think that is probably the best way to play low-risk this week. The Daily Plug is live over at OccupyFantasy.com for Week 9 contests. Low-risk contests, high-risk contests are favorite ways to play this slate in detail. Far more detail than I'm able to go into in this video. Would appreciate it if you click on over there if you're a subscriber to the site and read that. We'd love to have you as a subscriber to the site. If you have any more questions about Week 9, you can go into our Discord and join the NFL channel and talk to us in there. We're happy to answer those questions. We will be in there all weekend doing so. And we will have a live Q&A in Discord at 11 a.m. before lock in our NFL voice channel, going over any last-minute questions that you have for the slate. So that's one of the reasons, uh, if you're a little uncertain going into Sunday morning, if you want to get some feedback on how you're building your lineups, we'll be in there to answer your questions for a half an hour live before lock. The team here at Occupy doing a ton of great work here in November. We've got NBA well underway. A lot of NBA content here on the channel. We've got our NFL showdown videos. We've got our NFL showdown plugs in addition to all this main slate content that we put out for you. So make sure that you're checking all of that out. We'd love to see you subscribe to the channel because that's how you will get notified that all of this content is available for you as well. Good luck in week nine, everybody. And we'll be back in week 10 to talk more NFL.